your holy word and for everything that's in it. Second Timothy says that it's God breathed. And we're so blessed to have these words that you breathed, that you gave us, that you had holy men write in a book for us. God, help us to, to learn when we, when we read your word and when we hear your word. Help us to learn and, and change and be what you created us to be, to find your path and to walk on it. God, I pray that everybody here will, will learn something tonight, get some little thing out of your word. And then tomorrow, I pray that everybody will safely get together with their families and, and enjoy turkeys that you created. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week, I think it was Thursday, Ryan called me and said, you're on. And I'm supposed to be in Melbourne Beach now with my family. But I learned a few years ago, uh, Ryan once told me, asked me to teach, and uh, I said no because of things that were going on in my life. I, I felt like I shouldn't be up here. And um, shortly after that, God made it clear to me that I made a bad choice by refusing to, to teach his word to his people. That was a bad choice. He didn't, he didn't punish me for that, but he just made it clear to me that it wasn't a good decision. So I vowed that I would never do that again. So I'm here, and tomorrow morning I'm going to get up early and drive 250 miles to be with my family. <laughs> so he, he told me this on Thursday, and a couple days later I'm, I'm wondering, you know, what, what I'm going to teach. And so in my morning devotion... Um, this verse came to me, which is from Psalm 107. It's, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And, and I just knew that it's Thanksgiving. God wants me to teach about being thankful. So um, I began to study Psalm 107. And then I had this bright idea that I should have a Thanksgiving story to tell before I start teaching Psalm 107. So I thought, that's a good idea. God must have given me that idea because I don't have good ideas. So I started to look on the internet looking for Thanksgiving stories. And it wasn't hard to find them. They're, the internet's loaded with stuff like that. And I found this one and I read it and I thought, this is a pretty good one. And, and then I, I didn't turn it off. I kind of left it there and I went away because I had to do something and my wife saw the story and she, she read it and she says, why is that story on the... I said, I'm thinking about using that in my teaching. Oh, that's a great idea. She says, you should have two stories, you know. <laughs> oh no, now I got to look and find another one. <laughs> well, the next day I felt the Lord knocking on my heart that he, he did want me to tell a Thanksgiving story, but he didn't want me to find it on the internet. He wanted me to find the story in his word. So that's what Luke 17 is about. So I'm going to read that to you now. Luke 17, verse um, 11 through 19. Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? 
And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. So here we have the story of ten men. And they were all cleansed. They were all healed. But only one of them was made well. Through faith. The others, they, they got new clean skin. But they weren't made well. They were only healed physically. They weren't doing too good spiritually. But the one who came back and gave thanks, Jesus said he was made well by his faith. So it seems to me that giving thanks is pretty important. Something that we shouldn't neglect, something that we shouldn't have to have a special holiday called Thanksgiving to get us to give thanks. Okay, let's turn to uh, Psalm 107. I'm just going to read through it first. I'm going to read through the whole psalm, and then we'll go back and touch on a couple things. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands. Let me uh, tell you for a second. This whole psalm, it's about the Israelites when they were going through the desert and all. But as you read along with me and listen to it, I want, to, want you to put yourself in this psalm, that this psalm is about you and about me not just about the Israelites. Verse 3, And gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of the darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind which lifts up the waves of the sea. 
They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell that they may establish a city for a dwelling place and sow fields and plant vineyards that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them and they multiply greatly and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. The righteous see it and rejoice, and all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things, and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. I think I probably don't even need to go back and go over this because what, what can I say that's any better than God's Word? God's Word has power. My words don't have anything. But just the same, we'll, we'll take a look at this because it's so important. Giving, in the middle there, it said that giving thanks is a sacrifice. A sacrifice that we're ex expected to give. Jesus wanted all ten of those to come back and give thanks, but only one did. You know, first look at that story, you think Jesus was disappointed, but he wasn't disappointed. See, in order to be disappointed, you have to be expecting something to happen, and then it doesn't, and then you're disappointed. But Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew that only one of the ten was going to come back. So he wasn't disappointed. He just used that to show us our lack, our lack of giving thanks, and how we need to be more attentive to giving thanks. He starts out this psalm. These, these, you know, David penned these words, but they were breathed by God. God gave us these words. And it starts, God tells us, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Where, where would we be if God's mercy didn't endure forever? We'd all be on our way to hell, every single one of us, if it wasn't for God's mercy. I was talking to a lady at the convalescent home Saturday, and, and she wanted to know if, if Hitler could go to heaven. She was a Jewish lady, and, and she wanted to talk about the Holocaust and all. And I, and I said, you know, I, I really don't know how Hitler's life ended. And I said, probably he's in hell, but I don't know that. I said, if before he died, if he truly repented and asked the Lord to forgive him, our Lord would forgive even Hitler. That's how merciful God is. He forgives anybody that wants to be forgiven. Anybody. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That's me. I, I don't know if that's you, but that's me. I'm redeemed. I mean, I was a sinner. A bad sinner, a selfish slob. And he redeemed me. 
and he's redeemed people from the east and from the west and from all over. He redeems anybody that wants to be redeemed. He doesn't leave anybody out. He went to the cross and shed his blood for every single person that will have it. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Isn't that so like us? We go the wrong way, and we keep going the wrong way until things get so bad that finally we cry to the Lord, and he saves us out of our trouble. We do it over and over again, and he keeps saving us out of his, our trouble. He doesn't say, I saved you enough times. I'm done with you. Nope, he never says that because his mercy endures forever. Thank you, God, for your mercy that endures forever. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. When, when you follow the Lord... He leads you the right way. When you don't follow the Lord, you go the wrong way. That's how you end up with all those distresses. But he leads us in the right way. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I don't know if you paid attention while I read this, but uh, he repeats that over and over again in this psalm. He says, oh, that men would... As if to say, they don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, if only they would. Well, there was ten men healed, and only one of the ten, that's ten percent, came back and said thanks. And God says, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. He's practically begging us to give him thanks. This is important. Giving thanks is really important. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. I remember being a longing soul, thinking that life is meaningless. I used to think, I get up in the morning, I go to work, I come home, I go to bed, I get up in the morning, I go to work, I come home, I go to bed, and I used to think, well... What is this? I just keep doing this till I die? It just didn't make any sense to me. That was my soul was longing for, for something. I, I didn't know what, but I was longing for God. His goodness. I had a hungry soul, but I didn't know that. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. That was me. That was me. I despised the counsel of the wise. And I sat in darkness. And I didn't realize that I was in irons and chains. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. See, when we're, when we're going away from God, sometimes he makes things really tough for us. And, and it seems like a curse at the time, but, it, but it's really a blessing. Because when he gives us all this pain and trouble, it causes us to turn to him. And that's what we need. And it says there was none to help. Sometimes we get in the way of that. Sometimes we have a, a child or even a parent or a brother or somebody who's a mess. God wants them to be where there's none to help, but we come to the rescue. I'll help. I'll save him. I'll give him money. I'll do this. I'll do that. You want him to turn to God? Leave them with no help. So they need God. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. 
You see, that's what happens when, when they're in such great distress. They cry out to the Lord, and He saves them. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. That's what He did for me. And I know He did for a lot of you as well. And if you know somebody who's in chains, let God save them. Let God break those chains. Pray for them. Don't you break their chains. You can't do it. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Now, now he's talking about fools. I was one of those too. I was a fool. And um, I was afflicted. But then I cried out to the Lord when I was in trouble, and He saved me out of my distresses. And He does that for everybody. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. His Word. Jesus is His Word. Jesus is called the Word in the Gospels. He sent His Word and healed them. That's how, how we were healed, by Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be no healing. There'd be no mercy. There'd be no grace. There'd just be destruction. But we were delivered from destruction by Jesus. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works for the children of men. God became a man, God, the, the creator of, of everything, all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing, complete, needs nothing. God wants us to love Him, but He doesn't need us to love Him. He doesn't need anything. He's complete. He's whole. He's awesome. But He loves us. And he became a man and came and dwelled on this earth and suffered. He lived like a pauper, suffered ridicule, was spit on, beat, whipped, thorns pounded into his head, nails in his hands. The Creator, He just took that for us. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness sit around the table tomorrow and do one of those little funny family things. Let's take turns saying what we're thankful for and stumble. Um, uh, what am I thankful for? Uh, um, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. God wants us to declare His works with the rejoicing. He wants us to tell everybody about it. He wants us to declare it. Let it be known. Let people hear you giving thanks. I mean, in the workplace, if somebody says, oh, you did a good job, or, or they just say something and you say, yeah, thank God. It's not going to send anybody reeling or running, but they hear from you, he, he always thanks God. That should be a habit. It should just naturally roll off our tongues. Thank God. There, there's so many things to thank God for all day long, every day. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep. I see this as, as a workplace. He's talking here about men who go down to the sea and, and work on ships. I go to my shop and work on canvas. And um, to do the work I do, it, it takes some skill. And the skill that I have to do it, I got from God. And so I thank God all day long. When I, when I sew something together and, and I get done sewing it and it turns out right, I say, thank you, God. Because I know I couldn't have made that come out right if, if he didn't help me to do it. And then I take it and I go to the boat and I install it and it fits. 
I'm like, thank you, God, it fits, you know. And, and then the guy pays me, and I'm, thank you, God, for the check, you know. And all day long, I'm thanking God. I don't, I don't need a special day called Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but every day is Thanksgiving. And it says, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. God's visible everywhere. You, you can't miss it unless you got your eyes shut. And even then, you, with your eyes shut, you still can't miss it. Only liars say there's no God. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. I don't know if any of you have ever been on a boat in a storm, but it's a frightful experience. The boat goes up and down, and you think any second you're going to drown. So, you know, when the disciples woke Jesus up and said, we're going to drown, I, I've been there. I, I know what they were talking about. You know, they, they were scared. You're in a boat, and, and the sea whips up. It's more than more than you can handle. I mean, they had Jesus in the boat. <laughs> he could calm the storm, but if you're in a boat and Jesus ain't in the boat with you, you're in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. To their desired haven. He guides them. He guides us. Just have to follow him. You have to listen to him. You have to read his word and listen for a still small voice because he never shouts at anybody. Never shouts. I know I, I try to listen as best I could. You know, I, I, heard, him, I heard him tell me I needed a story. So I, I went looking on the internet for a story. Only I didn't hear everything, you know, but I, I stayed in the Word, and, and then I heard him tell me, wrong story, Marty. <laughs> you just got to keep listening. He talks. He talks. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. That's talking about here and now. That's talking about coming to church and while you're here, praising God. You know, Pastor Ryan said before that sometimes, you know, people say you shouldn't act two different ways, one way at church and one way out in the world. And, and there's a point to that. But, but also, when you come here, this is a special place. And when you come here, you're amongst all God's people. And we should be praising God to each other. Praise the Lord. Uh, he just says that because he wants to sound religious. No, no, no. That, that's a good thing to say. Praise the Lord in front of your brothers, in front of the elders, in front of everybody. Praise the Lord all the time. Praise the Lord. Give him thanks. Says right here, God said, do it in the assembly. Do it in front of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. There, there it is again. It, it sounds like punishment. It sounds like it says for wickedness, he turns fruitful land into barrenness, and he turns water, well springs into dry ground. But it's not. It's not punishment. It's a blessing. He's going to cause these wicked people, some of them, to turn to him. He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. See, he goes both ways. There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish a city for a dwelling place, and sow fields and plant vineyards, that they may yield a fruitful harvest. If you're faithful, God makes things happen for you. Right, Austin? When you're faithful, when you just stay the course, 
you don't have to go, let's see, I need to get a better job. I need to leave this job and go get a better job so I can make more money. No, you just be faithful. And God will God will take care of the rest. He'll cause you to yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them, and they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. Just be faithful. He won't let your cattle decrease. I mean, we don't, we're not farmers. We don't have cattle. So for me, that's dollars. He won't let my dollars decrease. You know, I, I have enough money to buy food every week for my family and to keep a roof over our head and put gas in the car. And he doesn't let that decrease. Sometimes I, I get worried. Business slows down, and I start thinking, oh, what's going to happen now? What, what are you doing to me, God? I start blaming him, you know, when I start running low, you know. But I, I've never run out, never, ever. My children have never begged for bread, nor have I. Because he blesses me. He blesses us. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their fa families like a flock. If, if somebody's oppressing you, leave it to the Lord. He's going to turn that around. He, he, he doesn't let the wicked triumph. Although it seems that way, David said that, that he looked at the, the wicked and, and thought they were better off than him. They had everything. They didn't have any worries. They didn't have trials. I remember when I was, uh, before I was a Christian, I didn't really have trials because nothing I did bothered me. You know, I just did whatever pleased me. But afterwards, when I started following the Lord, life became a trial. And so the wicked, they don't have trials. Life is easy for them. That's what David said. And then he, while he was in the temple, he realized their feet were in a slippery place. So if you're walking with the Lord, your feet are on solid ground. Nothing slippery there. The righteous see it and rejoice. And all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things. And they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Be wise. Understand these things. I have um, some other verses, mostly from Psalms. I'm not going to ask you to turn there. I'm just going to read them to you. These are about giving thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? David, David used that to try and get God to heal him. He said, if, if you let me die, then who's going to give you thanks? That's because David gave God a lot of thanks. So... He felt like God would be losing out if he died. He'd be in the grave and he couldn't give God thanks anymore. And seeing as how such a small percentage of people give God thanks, he, he was kind of right. And God put it in his word. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Sing praises to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. There you are. That's all you need to give thanks for. Just remembering his holy name is cause to give thanks. And, and his name, not talking about Jesus or God or Elohim. They're talking about his character, his being, who he is, what he does. Just thinking about that should give you reason to say thanks. Thanks, God. You awesome, mighty creator that listens to me when I pray, blesses me when I don't deserve it, forgives me when I ask. 
died for me on the cross. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever, David said. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks. For your wondrous works declare that your name is near. He's near. His works prove that he's near. You, you can see him everywhere. Everywhere. And the more you know about him, the more you see him. I mean, I can see him in that column right there that's holding up the roof. That thing's put together with atoms and molecules and these little things that spin around that are microscopic that you can't see, that scientists don't know how they stay together, how they don't just fly apart. Well, there it is in that column. It's all staying together and not coming apart, and the roof's not falling on our head. That's God. God's holding up the roof, not that column. <laughs> Turn that phone off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was my phone. <laughs> so we, your people, and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. It's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Is that talking about tomorrow? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Is that what we're supposed to do that tomorrow? Enter into his gates on Thanksgiving Day. No, every day, every day. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I have to admit, I, I don't get up in the middle of the night and thank God. Sometimes I can't sleep and it takes me a, a long time of tossing and turning before I finally say, hey, I, maybe I should pray. And it works every time, but for some reason it takes me a while to figure that out. Each time is like a whole new thing. Like I, I never did this before. <laughs> Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Then, I guess we got, I got some more time, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's turn to um, Psalm 136. I call this David's List. You need some reason to give thanks? David has a whole list. give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him, now, now the rest of these verses he leaves out, give thanks to the Lord, but it's, it's implied in each and every verse. He's saying, give thanks to him who alone does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. 
To him that stretched out the earth above the waters for his mercy endures forever. To him that made great lights for his mercy endures forever. Great lights, the sun and the moon and the stars. God made all that stuff. And his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever. How many times is he going to say that, his mercy endures forever? This is God's word, breathed by God. I think he wants us to know that his mercy endures forever. And we're supposed to give him thanks for it every day, all day, and in the middle of the night. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. He, he did all this for Israel, you know, he spread the sea and let them walk through it. And it, they didn't deserve it. They were, they were nasty people, the Israelites, just like me. I was a nasty person, and I didn't deserve to be redeemed, but he redeemed me. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endures forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures endures forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever, and gave their land for a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. Even a heritage unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. Who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endures forever, and has redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that we need to give you thanks because your mercy endures forever. God, forgive us for our failure to give you thanks, for the things we take for granted, for the things that we think we earned or we have coming. Forgive us, God. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.